Hello, and welcome to Green Building Research Institute's course on natural lighting, daylighting for green building projects. Please take this opportunity to adjust your computer speakers and monitor to best view this presentation. I'm Rebecca Joan Brown, and I'll be leading the discussion today. Daylighting for Green Buildings is a 300 level course that is worth two lead specific hours for the BDNC, IDNC, and O&M specialties, and also qualifies for two AIA sustainable design hours. As you follow along today, you may pause the presentation at any time or log out completely and resume the course right where you left off later. You can also go back to review information or repeat a slide and the highlighted links will provide you with extra information on some topics. At the end of the course, a link is provided to our evaluation form. We really appreciate your feedback, so please take the time to let us know how we're doing and where we can improve. Daylighting, or natural lighting, not only illuminates a space, but also provides a strong connection between the built and natural environments. This course focuses on how natural light can best be exploited in commercial building applications and how daylighting strategies are rewarded in the LEED Green Building Rating System. We will look at both classical and modern lighting applications and discuss some of the positive and negative effects produced by introducing natural lighting strategies. We will look at examples of various daylighting strategies and discuss the merits and ideal applications of each. This will be a 90 minute course and a short quiz is included at the end. While you may retake the course and the quiz as many times as you need to, you will need to score 80% or better in order to receive credit for the course. The identification number and other reporting information for this course can be found on the last slide. We will begin this course by looking quickly at some classical uses of daylighting and then go on to discuss modern daylighting strategies. We will highlight some of the benefits associated with the inclusion of daylighting interventions in commercial buildings, especially those associated with health and productivity. In section two, we will look at specific daylighting applications and how they can be used most effectively. These strategies will include both common and more unusual applications, and we will give examples of each. For each of the strategies that we discuss, we will look at how you can incorporate it into various commercial building applications, and we will look at some of the potential complications and considerations that should be planned for. In Section 3 of the course, we will focus more specifically on how daylighting applications apply to lead credit. There are some lead credits that are directly earned through daylighting and some that are indirectly affected by it. We will look at the daylighting related credits included in the three major lead rating systems, BDNC, IDNC, and O&M. Daylighting illumination can come from direct, diffused, or reflected sunlight. Natural light introduced into interior spaces helps to reduce the need for artificial lighting during the day, minimizes glare, and optimizes lighting quality. Daylighting takes advantage of natural sunlight through well-placed windows and specialized floor plans to brighten up a building's interior while providing a visual and emotional link to the outside world. Daylighting is the practice of designing and strategically placing windows, skylights, and other openings throughout the envelope of a structure to effectively illuminate interior spaces. There are several benefits associated with daylighting in all buildings, and especially in buildings that are aiming to be more sustainable or to earn LEED certification. One of the most easily quantifiable benefits of daylighting is a reduction in the electricity needed for interior lighting. For buildings that are primarily occupied during daylight hours, reductions in the amount of artificial lighting needed can provide significant energy savings, which translates to lower operating costs. Another benefit of daylighting for commercial buildings is that it can increase productivity in building occupants. 
There have been studies performed that establish a connection between worker productivity and increased access to daylighting, which we'll discuss more in the coming slides. Access to natural light has been linked to more positive attitudes and less sick days in some offices. Beyond these more measurable benefits, natural lighting is also more aesthetically pleasing and can help designers to create more attractive spaces that users will enjoy. Daylighting also diffuses easily throughout a space and can be controlled through shades and other devices. The picture shown here from Le Corbusier's Church at Fermini demonstrates how strategic application of natural lighting can be used for an emotional aesthetic effect. The O&M rating system also has a credit that directly rewards daylit spaces as well as some credits that are influenced by the inclusion of daylighting strategies. In this rating system, the credits for daylighting and views are combined into one, allowing you to pursue either a daylighting or views point for this credit. Similarly to BD and C, there are several related credits that are affected by the daylighting strategies that you choose. Again, overall energy performance may be affected positively or negatively as daylighting will reduce energy for artificial lighting, but may increase energy needed for HVAC if appropriate insulation is not accounted for. Controllability of systems will also be influenced by the inclusion of daylighting, as in the BDNC credit. Skylight applications range from simple openings in the roof of a building to very sophisticated assemblies involving orientation, material, and shading studies. One example of a more sophisticated skylight installation is the extension to the High Museum of Art in Atlanta designed by Renzo Piano Building Workshop. The skylight system uses over 1,000 small skylights with uniquely designed shading and reflecting mechanisms. Each round opening is shaded by a 5-foot high solar shade oriented to allow in gentle but ample north light. It is important that the light admitted be diffused and indirect, as intense sun exposure will cause the artwork in the gallery below to degrade quickly. The skylights sit atop 3-foot high light tubes, which reflect the gathered light into the galleries below in a way that illuminates the art without causing damage from solar radiation. The light flooring and pure white walls reflect this diffused light well, allowing it to be amplified without becoming intense. These interventions allow the natural daylighting in the space to eliminate all need for artificial lighting during the day.